Welcome to City Life. I'm Beverly Thompson. What does poverty look like? How does it impact Durham and our next generation? What can we do to eliminate it? For close to a year now, the City of Durham and many others have made it their priority to answer those very questions. This call to action was sounded in early 2014 during the annual State of the City Address when Mayor Bill Bell made it his mission to address poverty and the many negative impacts it has on our community. Joining me to talk about the Poverty Reduction Initiative, what has happened so far, and the next steps is Mayor Bill Bell. Welcome, Mayor, and thank you so much for joining me. Good to be here, Governor. Mayor, earlier this year, a huge part of your State of the City address focused on reducing poverty, neighborhood by neighborhood, in this year, 2014. So, why did you feel so strongly that this was an issue that Durham needed to tackle? Well, Beverly, uh, I think uh, all of us can agree Durham has really made a lot of progress in the last decade or so. Mm -hmm. uh, downtown is uh, re re revitalized, uh, it's getting to be a destination point. Uh, we're beginning to do things in our inner city neighborhoods. And I just felt that uh, we're a lot comfortable now to address this as such as this. Uh, Durham has a lot of resources, mm -hmm. uh, great universities, uh, great companies. Uh, we're a city, the fourth largest city in the state of North Carolina now, about 249,000 people. But unfortunately, about 40,000 of those persons live in poverty. Mm -hmm. And I just felt, uh, given the resources where we are, uh, where the city is at this time, it was something that we, we needed to address. And while it was done during my state of the city address, it really was a call for all persons to get involved in trying to deal with this issue. Mm -hmm. Now, I know one of the m major catalysts that really brought this to the forefront mm -hmm. was the census data and what it showed for certain neighborhoods in Durham, not all neighborhoods, but no, just exactly. a few that seem perpetually affected by poverty. What areas really got your attention and why? Well, we, we tried to look at this uh, from a data-driven uh, viewpoint, and mm -hmm. you're right. You know, we looked at the U.S. Census and looked at tracks uh, in the city of Durham that ha had high poverty rates mm -hmm. and decided to try to focus on those that were at the highest. So uh, again, when you look at the fact that you've got a city of 240,000 people, 40,000 living at the poverty level. And when we say poverty, uh, for an example, uh, the federal government defines a person being in poverty if they are making uh, about $11,600 a year or less, mm -hmm. the one person. And as the family increases, you can add $4,000 to that. So if you had a family mm -hmm. of two, if they are $15,000, they would still be considered living in poverty. So mm -hmm. it was just something we, we really need to look at as a community, as a city. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, this is an, an issue that city government can handle alone. So you, of course, reached out to the community to help lead this effort. Um, why did you select particular people to help you with this overall initiative? Well, that, that's a good point because um, when poverty just isn't about the dollars. Right. Uh, it involves health, education, jobs, and et cetera. Mm -hmm. And I thought to really get the attention of the community, it would be important to have our elected officials at the highest level to get involved. So I, I've reached out to the Durham Board of County Commissioners, mm -hmm. the Durham Public School System, and of course the Durham City Council. and. Uh, all of them have agreed to, to work on this effort, and uh, that's really has been the focus of what we've been trying to do in terms of getting people at that level. And then we're looking at other leaders throughout the city also. Mm -hmm. And you set up task force for them to head. And how did you select the areas that needed to be addressed as they related to poverty? Well, when, when we look at poverty again, it, it just isn't about the dollars. Right. Uh, it's about uh, where you live, the housing that you live in, your health care. Uh, whether or not you feel safe in your communities, public safety, uh, whether or not you have a job, mm -hmm. uh, what the education level is, and it's about finances. Mm -hmm. So uh, they were the six areas that we decided to focus on, and mm -hmm. they're the six areas that we set up task force on. And mm -hmm. we've asked each one of the elected leaders to co-chair one of those task force. And likewise, if community residents are involved, we have them involved in that mm -hmm. matter also. Were they these areas in particular that they were interested in or that you felt were a good match for them? Or how, Well, how you when, when you look at the areas that we talked about, health, uh -huh. that's certainly something that's under the, pretty much the auspices of the Durham County Commissioners. Mm -hmm. uh, when you look at public safety, that's pretty much a combination of the city and the sheriff's department. Mm -hmm. uh, you look at education, that definitely has to do with Durham public school system. Housing is a combination of city city efforts, and uh, they pretty much fall under one of those three areas of government, mm -hmm. Durham Public Schools, 
Durham Board of County Commissioners of the Durham City Council. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, back in March 2014, you held a meeting and you brought everybody together, the community leaders and even people from the community and people who actually live in poverty um, to help develop an, an overall plan and a road map with benchmarks and everything. And they all came together to kind of meet the challenge. What came out of this meeting and how did it impact future meetings? Well, as, as you indicated, uh, we did the say the city address in February 2014. Mm -hmm. Uh, we followed that up by a call to the community, and that was done in March. Uh, we convened at uh, the Durham Rescue Mission. They were gracious enough to provide a facility and provide breakfast. And we, provided, we actually sent out uh, invitations to a broad cross-section of the community, mm -hmm. uh, not just elected officials, uh, business community, education community, uh, civic groups, and just as importantly, the residents that live in the community. Uh -huh. So we had probably about 100 persons that came out to that meeting. And at that point, we sort of laid out uh, what the objective was to talk about the task force and to try to get people to, who had an interest to sign up. And we had about 60 people mm -hmm. out of that group that signed up for one of the six task forces. Mm -hmm. That's pretty impressive, wouldn't you think? I, I, I thought it was. And it was an early morning breakfast, but uh, great attendance, great questions. Mm -hmm. And as a result, we were able to kick it off. Mm -hmm. And Durham being Durham, complete involvement. And I know you, you got a little bit of, um, I guess, feedback from people who lived in poverty saying that they weren't being included. How did you handle that? Well, it, it, it really came about uh, because we've targeted an area, and we can speak about that later, mm -hmm. uh, of the community we're focusing on. And uh, we were trying to make sure that, as a minimum, people in that resident, in that area, were involved. But likewise, there were people outside that area that felt they should have been involved also. So mm -hmm. we didn't have a problem with that. Uh, it, you, you can't deal with a challenge like this and not involve the people that are being impacted the most. So it's, it's very important that the residents of the targeted area that we've chosen be involved to the extent that they can as mm -hmm. much as possible as we try to go about meeting this challenge. Okay. All right, Mayor, we're going to take a quick break, but please stay with us for the second half of City Life as we take a closer look at how a call to action recruited foot soldiers to get involved as the next steps for the Poverty Reduction Initiative. Plus, during the break, you'll get a sneak peek at what's to come in the next edition of Durham Magazine, and you'll want to grab a free copy for yourself as soon as it hits the newsstands. We'll be right back. Hi everyone, I'm Andrea Griffith Cash, the Vice President of Content for Durham Magazine. Since 2008, Durham Magazine has been the Bull City's premier lifestyle magazine. We are published eight times a year and our goal is to celebrate the best of our community. We bring you stories about style and home design, new businesses, interesting personalities, our art scene, restaurants, Durham schools, and much more. Durhamites are almost obsessive about their love of this city. We capture that passion within our pages, bringing it to life with breathtaking photography and gorgeous design. You can find copies of Durham Magazine all over the city for free at grocery stores, coffee shops, boutiques, bookstores, and more. Or if you want Durham Magazine delivered in the mail to your home, you can subscribe. Just go to durhammag.com. Our latest issue is December, January. In it, we bring you our annual holiday gift guide. I really want to urge all of you to shop locally this holiday season. Durham is full of business owners and artisans who would love your support, and it makes the gift giving process all the more fun and personal. Take buying local a step further and pinpoint gifts that are not only sold in Durham, but are made here. Pick up a painting from a local gallery, put together a food basket comprised of items from the farmer's market or from your neighborhood bakery, or think outside the box, literally, and give the gift of an experience. Who wouldn't appreciate tickets to Deepak's wonderful Broadway series? Or the chance to go on a food tour, take a dance lesson, get a massage, or see a nationally known comedian at the Carolina Theater. Find many more gift ideas in Durham Magazine's December-January issue. It's out now. Happy holidays. See you in 2015. I've come up with the family emergency plan. What is it? It's difficult to talk about, so I'm not telling you. I'm so glad I won't have to remember anything. And me too. Visit ready.gov slash kids for tips and information. Welcome back to City Life. Joining me again to talk about the community's poverty reduction initiative and what's next is Mayor Bill Bell. Also joining us is Joyce Briggs, an employee with the Durham Housing Authority and a volunteer in this effort. Thanks for staying with me, Mayor. 
great. And yeah. thank you for joining me, Joyce. Thank you. Mayor, before we get started, yeah. can you give us an idea of the area of Durham that we're talking about for this poverty initiative? Sure, that's, that's very important. Uh, we're looking at an area in northeast central Durham. Mm -hmm. uh, it's defined, it's called Census Tract 10.01. Okay. Uh, there are about 3,400 persons that live, live in that area, and it happened to be one of the highest poverty uh, areas in the city mm -hmm. uh, next to one other census tract. But uh, what we've done is use a criteria that was established by the Department of Urban and Regional Studies at UNC Chapel Hill. Mm -hmm. And they define what they consider to be distressed urban tracts. Mm -hmm. And they went across North Carolina. There are 18 of these uh, distressed urban tracts, and eight of them are in Durham. But also what, what they found is Durham is not in the top 10. Mm -hmm. So it's not like we have uh, eight tracks and we're in the top 10 in terms of urban distress tracks. We aren't in the top 10. Mm -hmm. But we looked at those eight tracks and they had definitions of what an urban distress tract is. It had to do if the poverty rate was 50% or greater than the state average, that qualified. Uh, if the unemployment was 50% or higher than the state average, that uh, uh, put them in that area. And if their per capita income was a third or less of the state income, uh, that qualifies. So when we looked at the urban distressed areas in Durham, mm -hmm. uh, we found that 10.01 uh, met that criteria, but not all of 10.01. Hmm. Uh, there are sections in there, that about uh, 1,300 people that don't qualify. So the track we have is 10.01. Uh, there are about 2,400 persons that live there, mm -hmm. and that's what we're focusing on mm -hmm. uh, for our first uh, track of trying to reduce poverty, neighborhood by neighborhood, year by year, mm -hmm. starting in 2014. Okay, so a very targeted area very, that we're looking Very targeted. At. And okay. we, we wanted to make sure it was data-driven. It wasn't anecdotal where yeah. people told me this or told me that. Mm -hmm. We were really using data mm -hmm. uh, to look at the, this area. Mm -hmm. Now, you issued a call to action, like we said, for foot soldiers to actually go out and find out more information about these neighborhoods and mm -hmm. help conduct a survey. Did folks respond, and if so, who participated in this? I, I think we've had a good response. Uh, we were looking at volunteers, mm -hmm. and as I said, we had uh, persons from Duke University right here at NCCU. We had a lot of students from Central that went out and did the door-to-door -door knocking. We've had people from the community, the business community, uh, elected officials, and just as importantly, community residents, mm -hmm. uh, all involved in trying to uh, gather the data so that we can begin to look at how we address the issues. Mm -hmm. So why did you feel this was so important to actually gather the data? I know you said it's data driven and you'll have that. But uh, it's, it's important, Beverly, because uh, so much is on hearsay mm -hmm. and we wanted to have data that we could pinpoint so that as we began to move down the, the track of trying to deal with these issues, we could look at the data and see whether we improved or didn't improve. And mm -hmm. that's why uh, the, a lot of that is going to be in the hands of the task force because they're the ones that are actually going to decide what are the goals and what are the outcomes that they're looking for. Mm -hmm. uh, but the survey gives us a place to start with. We want to get a pretty good description of the community itself mm -hmm. in terms of those six areas that we're focusing on. Okay, before I ask Joyce what her experience was like, what did you personally learn? I mean, was there anything eye-opening for you? I can't say it was eye-opening, but I, I, in a way it was sort of revealing that uh, people who are living in this area, uh, a lot of them care about their community, mm -hmm. uh, they care about their neighbors, uh, a lot of them in situations not necessarily through any fault of their own, but because of circumstances, mm -hmm. and uh, they, they want to help and they want to see how they can be a part of the solution and not part of the problem. And mm -hmm. they open the doors uh, to us to come in and sit down and have these conversations, which I thought was uh, very, very comfortable. And mm -hmm. some, some conversations were held in their homes. Others we sat on the front porch and talked. Oh, okay, so very personal. Mm -hmm. Joyce, what prompted you to get involved in this? Um, why was it important to you to Well, it was easy soldier? for me to do that. Um, in the middle of this section and the targeted area are two communities, Hoover Road, community and scattered sites. Scattered sites is a community that I, I personally take responsibility for because there's about 55 seniors. Mm. And in the middle of that community is that's where we are. And they asked me to, um, to be a foot soldier and I had the, the team of the North Carolina Central School of the nursing students came with me and then we broke up into groups of six. Uh -huh. And two of us on each occasion went around and asked questions. So it was, um, I wanted to find out their opinions and their goals and their needs and if they knew about the resources that was available for them. Mm -hmm. So what did you learn? Oh my, some of them didn't want to open the door. Okay. And some of them really cared about their community. 
They let me know what is out there. For instance, there's only one grocery store in the area that was compare. There's not a bank that's close by. Mm -hmm. And the only other grocery store is Food Line on 98. So you can tell that, that the nutritional value of what they're bringing home is not where it should be. Mm -hmm. So they need those kind of resources close by. Mm -hmm. So what did you personally take away from this? I mean, did, did you, was there anything that was really just impactful for you during this whole process? Um, that they needed to get more involved. Uh -huh and let the mayor know what they want in the community so that their lives can um, improve. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So Mayor, as far as the responses go, you, do you have the results yet? We, we just completed the results mm -hmm. and we're in the process now of compiling the data and uh, the next step will be to go back to the residents in the community to let them know what we've obtained from the questionnaires that they filled out. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to convene a meeting, I think we scheduled for about the 3rd of December where we're calling all the task force together mm -hmm. and residents and anyone that wants to come to present the data and then to uh, charge the task force to begin to develop an action plan mm -hmm. and a tracking plan to, as to how they're going to address the issues that are raised. It's, mm -hmm. it's important to also uh, recognize that the questionnaire that we uh, took into the community, the questions really came from the task force members themselves. Mm -hmm. So health, education, public safety, finance, housing, jobs, all those task force submitted the type of questions that they felt were appropriate uh, to go out and ask the residents so that they could begin, begin their work. Mm -hmm. What were some of the questions, if you recall? Well, you know, jobs, education levels, uh, in terms of health, uh, you have a doctor, where do you go for health care, mm -hmm. uh, transportation, uh, housing, uh, do you own the house you live in, or do you rent? What's the condition? Are there repairs? Uh, do you feel comfortable there in your community in uh -huh. terms of public safety? Uh -huh. Just general type questions that I think you could ask anyone whether mm -hmm. you're in, in that neighborhood or not. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, they, they were formulated, hopefully, in a manner that we get answers that will allow the task force to begin to set goals and objectives for mm -hmm. addressing those issues. Mm -hmm. So I, I know you said we're going to look at all the information or you all are going to look at it, but what do you think is ahead for 2015, one, 2015 rather, once you've actually looked at the information? Well, let me say, when, when we started this process, I, I, and I've been doing this for quite a while, the mm -hmm. elected official piece, but uh, this is probably one of the more challenging uh, issues that I've dealt with because it's not like when you're building DPAC, you, you know what the end goal is, you, you're trying to get a contract, get the money, get the theater built, and you cut the ribbons and it's open. Uh, this is different. Uh, what, what you're trying to do is to measure how the quality of life of individuals have improved or not improved through the actions that you're taking. Uh, so we started, the, as I said, in February with the, with the State of the City Address. In March, we did, had to kick off, and we're now in October just beginning to look at the data that we've gotten. So. For me, 2015 is going to be a year of action mm -hmm. in terms of planning and setting targets to see how well we can address those issues. I see. Okay. Um, Joyce, what would you say to our viewers who are contemplating getting involved? What would you say to encourage them or, or to consider maybe not getting involved? I really would like for them to get more involved. Mm -hmm. um, speak up. Let everybody know what you're thinking. Um, the best thing to do is to call the mayor's office and volunteer to be a volunteer like myself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And Mayor, I have to ask you, um, you, you've been mayor for how many terms now? Uh, <laughs> I was elected in 2001, I'm into my seventh term, so okay. when I, at the end of this, this year it would be 14 years. You could very easily look at everything you've accomplished for the city and everything the city has accomplished and say this is too much of a challenge. What drives you? to do something like this? One, I care about this community. This community has been good to me. It's been good to my family. Uh, I think we have a really dynamic community, great people in it. And I'm sure that if Durham sets its task to doing something, it can accomplish it. And like I said, we've seen it happen in downtown. We've seen it begin to happen in some of our neighborhoods. And I think we can do the same thing with the issue of poverty. I'm, I'm not on any illusion that we're going to eradicate poverty. Mm -hmm. uh, but what I would hope as we move along that the quality of life of persons that are living in these areas will be improved in the areas of health, education, jobs, housing, uh, and et cetera. So mm -hmm. uh, it's a long-term effort. Uh, we've only 
taken a certain section of the city, but uh, hopefully if we're successful with this, then we can transport what we've learned here into other parts of the community. Okay, and Joyce, one final question for you. How do you see the Durham Housing Authority getting more involved in this effort? The Durham Housing Authority's Resident Services Department wants to bring all kinds of resources and um, programs in the communities that we have. Mm -hmm. um, we want them to take advantage of the resources that the, that the city has. I think Durham is a beautiful city and it's a growing city and there's a lot of things out here to do and they just need to get involved. Okay, all right, and one final question for you, Mayor. If viewers want to get involved in this initiative, how did they do that? They can call my office. Uh, the telephone number is 919-560-4333. Okay. And just let the staff know that they're interested in getting involved in the program, and they can tell them what task force they're interested in getting involved in. All right, very good. Thank you so much for this very important topic thank facing you. Durham, and thank you for joining me on the show today. Thank you. All right. Well, that does it for this edition of City Life. Don't forget to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and watch us on Durham Television Network and on YouTube. I'm Beverly Thompson. Thank you for joining me to learn more about City Life in Durham.